Little Women has been something that's been part of who I am for as long as I can remember. I don't actually remember reading the book. I think it was read to me because there was never a time when I didn't know who Jo March was. And she was always my girl. She was my literary character. She was the person I wanted to be and the person who I, I hoped I was. And I loved her. And so I'd always, I'd always had an idea of that character is something I might want to make something out of. It was something that I'd wanted to do uh, for a very long time. And I was, I, you know, Timothy Chalamet, who is in um, Lady Bird and is also in um, Little Women, and obviously Saoirse Ronan is also in Tracy Letts. But Timothy asked me, early before he agreed I think even he said why is this so important to you to make and I said to him Timothy this may be a more personal film for me than Lady Bird this is this is everything for me and it was something that I went into Sony and uh, I went into Amy and I said <laughs> I said before I had written and directed anything I said you have to hire me because I'm the only one who can do this justice and I have a very specific idea of what it's about and it's about women and it's about women as artists and it's about women and money and this is the story I'm interested in telling and I'm not making it up it's all in the in the text it's part of what the book is it's just an aspect of it we haven't delved into so um it was something that was just really really close to the surface for me and um it's it sounds odd to say it feels like more autobiographical to me than anything I've made as I've grown up with the book I think every time I've revisited it I've seen something different I think when I when I first knew of it um it was very much in the the coziness in the realm of childhood. And then as I got older, it shifted and, and what I was interested in the book shifted. And then when I read it in my 30s, when I was writing this screenplay, it completely new parts of it jumped out at me. And the part of it that was just in, in clear relief was how the part of the book that takes place when they're adults is so poignant and so interesting because it's them as grown women trying to figure out how to honor the fearless youth that they had. And that was the perspective that I started coming at the writing from, which is if I start with them as adults and then allow their childhood to live alongside them, not as flashbacks, but as two separate timelines. The way when we walk down the street, we're always walking with our younger self. It's not just us there. It's, it's who we thought we were gonna be and then who we are. And I, I thought there was just something incredibly poignant about it. The fictional family of the Marches, I always thought of them as these, as yes, these geniuses. Like Beth has piano, she has music. A Meg was an actor, Amy was a painter, Joe was a writer. And I didn't want them to sort of treat these things as hobbies because they don't in the book. They're, they're completely serious about these pursuits. And I, I wanted Beth, who is so tragic in the novel, to be also to suddenly, like I always had this vision of Beth as, um, who's so sweet and so kind, I had an image of her at a grand piano just letting it rip. And then all of a sudden thinking like, of course, she's just, she's just as ambitious as the rest of them. Why wouldn't she be? She's a March sister. She's not inevitably going to die. She has dreams of grandeur. And I wanted that to feel big. And, uh, and I wanted Meg's dream to act on stage to feel big and, and, like she could have really gone for something. And, and Amy says in the book, she says, I want to be great or nothing. That's not a line I made up. And, I, and, and the whole sequence in the book where Amy's struggling with feeling like she's not actually a genius is 
totally fascinating and modern and interesting. And I, I, I felt like I wanted to start from the place of what if I took all of their artistic pursuits incredibly seriously, because they do. And then what dynamic that is between the four sisters and how they love each other and there's this bond, but they're also really competitive and really can really get under each other's skin and they're funny and they're loud and they're mean and they're kind and they're everything. And I just wanted to get all of that in the soup because to me, that's what makes the tragedy and the love so much better is that they're messy and that they're totally wild. <laughs> For me, I always heard it as a modern story. It, for me, it never felt dusty. It always felt like I could, I could hear it clear as a bell. And I think I always go to what it sounds like to me because that's, I don't know, that's the kind of writer I am. If I can't hear it, it I can't shoot it. it I, I have to know. I almost could close my eyes while we're shooting and I could tell you which take I like just by based on how it sounds. Um, and so to me, the, I didn't have to dig to find the modern piece of it. it. It was just so obvious to me. And then when I have these great actors and I have, I have Saoirse Ronan and Florence Pugh and Laura Dern and Eliza Scanlon and Meryl Streep and Bob Odenkirk and Timothy Chalamet and Emma Watson and Tracy Letts and it, it, like, it just, uh, I could trust them because as soon as they're given the language, then they become, they, they make it even, you know, more alive and deeper and, 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 and they fill it out. Um, so for me, it was just, it was just trusting what I, what I, what I heard to be modern and then, um, just casting a lot of ridiculously talented people. Hey, stay with me for more on rom-com movies and last minute name chasers Crazy Stupid Love almost wasn't Crazy Stupid Love. The studio wanted to be called Wingman. Hmm. Now, Fifty First Dates almost wasn't Fifty First Dates. Fifty First Kisses was actually the original title. However, marketing found that the term kisses was turning off guys, so they changed it to Fifty First Dates. Remember to click here below subscribe and to tap the bell to always receive the latest trailers.